Cisco Certified Network Associate Day 55. Welcome back everyone, I'm Imran Rafai, your trainer for this entire series. Today we're going to talk about a layer one technology, cables. And we'll look at what are the different types of cables we have and the configuration of these cables. So without wasting much time, let's get straight into today's class. Our social media contacts are on the screen on the left side, my company contacts on the right, my personal contact. My email address is on the screen. If you think these videos are helpful, I would really appreciate if you could go to my LinkedIn profile and give me a recommendation, which is going to help me build my LinkedIn profile. Over the course of this series, um, we have spoken about uh, Ethernet many, many, many times. And we said you just plug a cable between two devices and the Ethernet starts working, right? Your connection forms and networking really starts happening between the two. And that all happens because of the power of Ethernet. So what we're going to do is in this video, we're going to really understand a little more about Ethernet, right? We'll not be looking at Ethernet um, into layer two, right? Layer two where uh, I think these that's something we have already looked at in previous videos where what happens when you go to layer two, how data uh, packets are created, how data frames are created, MAC address, how data communication happens in layer two and all that things we have discussed. In this video particularly, we would be looking at layer uh, one, which is nothing but the physical layer, right? So before we go ahead, we look at the type of Ethernet that is available. So we have Ethernet, uh, when it when you say Ethernet, we're referring to the 10 Mbps Ethernet. It has a formal name of 803.2 and an informal name of 10 base T. Now, whenever you see these 10 base T or 100 base T or whatever these base uh, informal names, so these are the informal names, at the end you see a T. When you see the T, you, you need to know that it is referring to a cable called UTP, right? UTP cable. Uh, is uh, what it is. So, um, like you'll see what are the other types of uh, cables that you can use, but T refers to UTP cable, which is nothing but your Cat5 cable or the regular cable that you see uh, in most of the networking world today. Uh, whenever you see T, another thing you need to know is uh, maximum distance that uh, signal you can use that cable is 400 meters. So, when you say maximum distance, because these are UTP cables, it is running on electricity, right? So electrical signals can, on, on, on uh, these UTP cables, electrical signals can run for 100 meters. It's not, it doesn't mean that you cannot use UTP cables or CAT5 or CAT6 cables for more than 100 meters. All it means is that one, in, in 100 meters, you will have to use a device like a switch or a hub or a repeater or whatever to regenerate those signals, right? Because because of how electricity works uh, and because of uh, the magnetic field that happens around uh, uh, electricity, um, that's pure school physics, right? So you know that in whenever there's current passing, there's an a magnetic field, right? So the electromagnetic field they call it. Uh, because of which you have data loss happening as current passes, right? And that's exactly why you have UTP cables where you have twisted pairs and when you do twisted uh, pairs, when you twist cables, you in a way try to mitigate that data loss or uh, loss of signals. So in spite of all that, you have 100 meter as the limit, right? Uh, the next uh, type of ethernet that you um, would see is called the fast ethernet and fast ethernet can do uh, speeds of up to 100 Mbps. It has an informal name of 100 base T. It has a formal name of 803.2U, right? And of course, it again does 100 meters. Uh, fast Ethernet, uh, Ethernet and Fast Ethernet uh, are grouped together. And uh, these two, Gigabit Ethernet and 10 Gig Ethernet are grouped together. Why we group that, I will explain to you in a while. But just know that Ethernet and Fast Ethernet is grouped together. Gigabit Ethernet and 10 Gig Ethernet are uh, group together. One of the reason is they both get into the gigabit area, right? So you, you gigabit Ethernet does one gig per second, uh, one gigabit per second. Uh, ten gig obviously does ten gig per second, right? Um, the informal name. So uh, one gig is nothing but thousand Mbps, right? One gig is thousand Mbps. So that's why the informal name says thousand base T, right? 
the 10 gig has a uh, informal name of 10 g base g right uh, formal names um, eight, uh, the gigabit ethernet formal name is 803.2 ab and 10 gig ethernet is 803.2 an and all of them have a limitation of 100 meters because they are all running UTP cables. Um, it would help if you remember the formal names because it could be part of exams where they might say 803.2 AB and then you would they would ask what's the maximum speed right. So it's it's not that difficult it's only four of those um, names that you need to remember so it would help to remember those names. Like I said, Ethernet can be run on two types of cables. You have the copper cable, right? Copper cable is with that uh, when you spoke about the um, informal name, whenever you had a T at the end, that's copper cable. And then you have fiber cable. Copper cable works on electricity. So that's something that we most of the time, whenever we uh, had discussions on throughout this uh, uh, series, we always spoke about Ethernet uh, running on copper cable, but Ethernet could also be run on fiber cable and fiber cable uses light, right? So copper cable uses electricity, fiber cable uses light. Um, let's look at both these cables um, as we go through. So we'll start with copper cable. So this is a typical CAT5 cable. So of course, this is the flat version of the CAT5 cable, which is easy to carry. But of course, you would have seen the other version, which is round. CAT5 is one of the cables, but uh, it's from a family called UTP. It is a short form for unshielded twisted pair, right? So that means these cables, if you if you skin uh, the, so this is the outer cover. So if you uh, skin the outer cover, you would expose eight individual colored cables right and each of those cables need to go into these grooves so you have these grooves into a connector called the rj45 we have discussed this before but let's do it again so this is the typical um, cable that you would see where you would have a round cable so you see this this is a round cable uh, unlike the flat cable that you saw on the last screen um, why don't you strip this uh, uh, outer jacket, you would see four pairs of colored cables. So that's blue and you have stripe blue, right? So blue, stripe blue is white and blue together. Similarly, brown and stripe brown, orange and stripe orange, green and stripe green, right? So these are what you call the UTP, uh, unshielded twisted pair. That's why they, they get the name twisted pair because of the twists of these cables. So if you see these cables, they're all twisted, right? So that's how they get the name twisted pair. So what you do, how do you connect this? So you first untwist these cables and you try to make them into, uh, you hold it into parallel form, right? So you may, you get eight individual cables parallelly straightened out, right? So once you straighten out, you would see the length of this RJ45. So you would keep exactly how much that length is and you use this cutter. Can you see a cutter here? There's, there are two blades, right? You use that cutter and you cut the cable. So you cut the cable exactly uh, how much you need. And once you do that, you start inserting those eight cables into these mini eight grooves that you have in this RJ45. And it will go such that you will, you will these wires would go and stay right on top of these golden uh, connectors that you see, right? So these are golden connectors which has if you see they're exposed from outside right once you do that you hold the cable right the cable with the wires inside like this and you insert it in this position so you have this position in this crimping tool so this tool is called the crimping tool right so crimping tool you insert the cable and the connector right cable and connector will be loose once you keep it but you put it inside this um, socket on the crimping tool and you do you do a regular scissor action where you get these two handles together right so you you need to open it and then you insert it and then you get these uh, handles back together once you do that you see this notch here this notch this notch goes into a lock here right it presses onto that lock 
once you press on the lock it has groove mechanisms to push these you see these golden uh, connectors these golden connectors are pushed inside such that it tears these wires so you just cut those i mean you see these teeth you have these teeth right so let me just clear the screen so you have these sharp teeth those sharp teeth go into these individual eight cables right it individually cables it connects to the metal wire so inside these uh, individual cables you have metal wires this connector goes and connects to those metals so now your computer can talk to these I mean you can connect to this cable by actually terminating on these termination points right that's how a UTP cable works so once it's it's done like you saw on the last screen it would be finalized like this so this is the notch I was talking about which is, gets pressed and there are teeth that pushes these individual uh, gold plated uh, connectors into those cables and then you, this cable is formed so once that is done you have cables that look like this so this is a finished cable so rj45 has a lock so this is a lock this is the one that holds this cable into your connector in your uh, network card if you want to remove it you just press it downwards and pull the cable out right so once you push it this locks but if you want to pull it out you need to press it here and then you pull the cable out once you do that this is where uh, your rj45 goes into your network card so network card uh, will have a, a connector like this where you insert your uh, RJ45 uh, Ethernet cables, UTP cables. Now this cable, this connector that you see on your computer, even though it looks the same, there are two types of connectors. One is called the MDI and the other is called the MDI-X. So what is MDI and what is MDI-X? We will discuss. So MDI is nothing but media dependent interface, right? Media dependent interface and, and the MDI-X is media dependent interface crossover x means crossover so mdi is a type of port that is there uh, on pcs right pcs or laptops and the user devices will have the mdi routers also have mdi and um, wireless access con access points w access points this also has mdi ports MDI exports are in, on switches or hubs, right? So the difference mainly is this. So an MDI port, port, uh, like now, okay, what, what this is nothing but, so if this, I'm just showing you how these eight cables. So I told you in, in the previous slide, I, sh I told you that you need to strip out those eight individual cables and then you need to arrange it in such in some way and insert into the RJ45, right? So this is how we need to do. So depending on what type of cable that we are building, this is what you need to do, right? So here you would have the outer jacket and this is a cable, but I'm just showing you how these eight cables are going to be connected, right? So once you look at the connector, the pin corresponding to one in an MDI port will be uh, uh, transfer, right? And pin 2 also would be Tx. This will be Tx plus, this will be Tx minus. So like in current, you, you see that you need electricity, always you need to have a loop, right? You need to have one loop for current to go, right? One, one loop, one uh, thing to current to go and another connection for the current to come back. And only when the loop is con completed, right? you're actually having a closed circuit right so until you have a closed circuit currents really don't work so that's why you have tx plus and tx minus right in mdi uh, connectors those connection point one and connection point two are transmitters but in mdix connection one and connection two are nothing but receivers so rx plus and rx minus right so this will work so in MDI, when you're connecting MDI to MDIX, typically you use something called as a straight through cable, straight through meaning 
that means on both end of this cable on both the sides you have the same wiring diagram so both the sides you have the same wire combinations that uh, you need to connect so what are the wiring diagram that is what you see here let me clear this so when you're doing straight through cable okay straight through cable straight through cable is used if you're connecting mdi uh, ports to mdi exports so that is you need to this is a standard um, whatever you want, you want you could do but you follow a standard then it becomes easy if uh, if you leave and another person comes tomorrow to troubleshoot he should be able to just look at those colors and be i be able to identify that it's it's configured correct or wrong or if it's a, a crossover cable or if it's a straight through cable right so this is the standard that you need to follow that will be light orange or rather orange stripe uh, orange um, green stripe blue blue stripe green brown stripe and brown right this is the standard so because of straight through this is called straight through because you're connecting mdi to mdi x right having said that i told you that um, ethernet and fast ethernet is grouped and gigabit ethernet and 10 gig ethernet are grouped right that's because gigabit uh, ethernet um, and fast ethernet they only use the four cables so you have eight cables or four pairs out of the four pairs only two pairs or four cables are used for ethernet and fast ethernet so what again what happens you have um let me use black so you have transmission transmitters and right tx plus and tx minus and for receive so so like i said this is tx this is tx and this is rx and this is rx and here this is rx rx and this is tx and tx right so for ethernet and fast ethernet you're only using the connector points one two three and six um, on either side mdi or mdi x right so here this will be transmitters and this will be receive receiver ports right so transmitter ports and receiver ports this is how they form uh, the communication between uh, mdi and mdi x now this is if you are like i said mdi and mdi x now what happens if you have to connect two pcs right both of them have mdi ports so you just need to understand how we work on a telephone so telephone whenever whatever you speak on the microphone goes to the speaker right goes to the other person's ears it doesn't go to the the microphone so microphone and microphone and earphone and the your speaker and speaker is not connected microphone and speaker is connected and your friend's microphone is connected to your speaker and that's why you can hear what your friend says right so so if you were to uh, similar devices right so these human beings are similar so his mouth has to be connected to her ears that's why she, he can speak and she can listen and if she were to speak her whatever she spoke had to go to his ears and that's how you would see so if you see there is a type of crossover right uh, this is ears this is ears and this is mouth and this is mouth right so mouth of one goes to the ear of the other and the same thing right so whatever spoken by uh, one person has to go to the ears of the other person for them to listen right so this is just just so that you understand whenever you do mdi to mdi that is if it is pc to pc connection or router to router connection right these are all mdi to mdi connection in that case you need to get a crossover connection even even switch to switch the trunk port switch to switch right even switch to switch you need to get a crossover cable because they are similar devices so mdi mdi or mdi x mdi x if when you're doing you need to get a crossover cable crossover cable what happens is since these ports are tx this is tx because they are similar device right one two one two is tx and three is rx six is rx three is rx six is rx right 
that means transmit whatever transmitting has to go to the other person's rx and other person's uh, so to to finish the loop this comes back like that and whatever comes from uh, the second tx right has to be looped back in these ports and that is why you need a crossover connection so simple when you're having similar devices with mdi and mdi ports or mdix and mdx port you need to have a crossover cable now what happens to gigabit ethernet and uh, 10 gig ethernet so like i said once you do gigabit ethernet or 10 gig ethernet you are using all the eight cables or all the four pairs that's how they can achieve speeds of gbps right because they use all the four pairs right so when you do all the four pairs first thing is there's no concept of tx and rx everybody does tx rx that means all the lines can do tx and rx right but crossover connection still needs to be done because of mdi mdi so this is how they do crossover uh, i mean it's exactly like the previous ones we looked at it previous one those one two three and six exactly is the same four and five goes to seven and eight and seven and eight goes to four and five that's all that is new right so in these in 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 your fast ethernet and ethernet you really didn't care about those cables normally you connect all those cables but you don't care about them because they are not used but if you're doing gigabit ethernet or 10 gig ethernet those cables are used if you have little bit uh, experience in the industry, you would have told me, Imran, I have never done this. I mean, no matter where I'm connecting the cables, I've always done a straight through cable, right? I've done straight through and it worked. Yes, it will work, right? MDI and MDIX concepts I've explained because this is what it was. But I mean, even today, a lot of devices still do MDI, MDXs. But today, there is another concept called Auto MDIX. That means Cisco devices and almost all the latest networking devices can do something called Auto MDIX. That means, depending on the cable, they analyze the signals that's going and coming, they can automatically convert themselves from MDIX to MDI or the vice versa, right? So Auto MDIX is a new concept that helps you not both get bothered about the cable that you're using because it will automatic the device will automatically do the switch over for you the next type of cable is a fiber cable so fiber cable is used because of the limitations you have in copper cables now fiber cable uses uh, light right uh, fiber cable comes in various forms so these this this is a picture of a typical outdoor uh, fiber cable so you have these uh, very very hard polyurethane cover right underneath you have polycarbonate insulators and inside you have steel wires right because steel wires are there to give that hard uh, you know uh, reinforcement so you're reinforcing it and you know the thing with the fiber optics is you you cannot bend it beyond a certain angle right if you bend it light will not do uh, total internal reflection and it will not work so you need steel reinforcement to make sure that you don't bend those cables and then you have copper insulator inside that again you have steel wires and then you have a protective layer and inside what you see here are the strands of fiber optics right fiber optics strands are very 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 delicate or very very small so this type of uh, configuration is typically done when you're laying these undersea cable right like we discussed your internet most of the internet runs through undersea cables across oceans uh, around the world and that is what enables internet in today's world so if you were to zoom this area you would go into something like this so fiber optic cables are two types you have single mode fiber optics and multi-mode fiber optics so once you have the fiber optics you've seen fiber optics they're very very small wires very small wires and those wires that you see you know you typically see orange wires or blue wires and that wire is the insulation what you see is insulation so inside that insulation you have cladding right you have 
um, some sort of cladding and inside the cladding you have the core and this core is the most important thing because light passes through the core. The cladding is made out of a material that allows for total internal reflection which is a primary property of fiber optics to work right if at all there is no total internal reflection fiber optics will not work because light will get uh, lost right so there will be total loss of light over a period if you run it for few meters you would because of the loss in whenever uh, if, if there is no total internal reflection light will get lost and the energy of light will keep degrading as it progresses single mode cables are typically uh, have a diameter of the internal core diameter of 9 micrometers but if you have multi mode it's slightly bigger I mean significantly bigger it's 50 micrometers to 62.5 micrometer that's the standard uh, cabling but the core in both the cases the core is 125 micrometers so if you were to just hold those uh, fiber optic cables you will not know whether they are um, single mode or uh, multi mode if you were to strip that slightly, um, you see that um, single mode is typically the light source is laser. So once you have laser, you send a laser light. So in, in electrical signals, if there is an electrical signal high, that's a 1. And if there's no electrical signal, that's a 0, right? Similarly, if there's light coming, it's 1. If there's no light, it's 0, right? Simple that's how you send so as long as you can have mechanism to send zeros and ones you can have data transfer right now how fast you can do that depends on various factors and depending on how fast you can do it you can decide if computer companies uh, computers can decode those uh, data faster so you have very high speed lasers that can quickly do on off on off on off on off on off depending on that receiving device can decode what that signal is and make signals just like how you can on off currents right on off on off on off and give zeros and ones and zeros and ones in multi mode uh, uh, you can not send one you can send multiple uh, light right so you have again a light source which can send the incident the, re, the incident uh, ray so you could send it at a certain angle so if you send it at this angle it will have total internal reflection and the receiving signal would be this similarly the blue signal will be this and you could send it a different angle green so you have multiple angles you could send uh, uh, lights at different angles and you have multiple signals going through one single cable that's what's called multi mode right uh, multi modes are typically cheaper and uh, single modes are typically more expensive than multi modes that's why multi modes are more common than single mode fibers and single mode fibers can run for much longer than multi mode but again you need different types of terminators for single modes so now we discuss about the wires the next thing that we need to discuss is the cable connectors so in in copper cable um, the there was a standard in place so rg45 was the only connector that you use uh, to terminate these wires right so you terminate those utp cables into an rg45 and you had an ethernet cable but in fiber there are hundreds of connectors right hundreds of connectors literally hundreds of connectors so the the top three that we uh, use today are these three that's shown on the screen so uh, these uh, images i got from the website cables to go.com uh, so thanks to them. So the first type of a connector is called the straight tip connector and that gets the name from this straight tip, right? Straight tip connector uses a bayonet, uh, if you see this bayonet uh, lock, that means you plug it into the socket and you turn it, you twist it. When you twist it, it stays in place because of the locking mechanism. Um, and the next is SC, standard connector or square, square connector, that's how it gets the name SC connector. Uh, it gets the name SC square because it is a square if you look at it from the front and this is a just push pull mechanism so you push it in if you want to uh, lock into the socket if you want to remove out of the socket you just pull it out right and again this is the uh, fiber next is called the loosen connector LC connectors so this is the LC duplex connector so you have two cables coming in and you also get the individual uh, version so you'll get the individual version that is only this 
So this is the LC connector. So these are the three types of connector that you have. So these connectors are the end point. So this is where the fiber comes and terminates. You put these connectors, then you can plug it into your network devices with a fiber port. So there are, there are a few accessories that we need to discuss in fiber. One is uh, your media converter. So this is a media converter. So you have why uh, your fiber signal coming into this box. It converts that into your uh, UTP copper cable. So fiber cable to copper cable and you can send it out or send it in whichever way it comes in it converts it uh, the media gets converted to the other medium from copper to fiber or fiber to copper and data goes back so you can go plug it this plug this into your router or your switch whatever right so this is the media converter the next type of uh, connector is called a coupler now this is a coupler uh, so you connect this is a uh, lc connector so you lc coupler so you plug one end of your LC cable here, the other end you connect here and then you couple. Why do you need a coupler? Uh, typically this is for temporary uh, connection. So if you have uh, two uh, fiber cables, you use a coupler to hold it in place temporarily, right? Temporarily if you want to do some testing, you temporarily do that. So in your routers or switches, this is how the sockets are going to be and that's how you connect. So if you want a more permanent fix so if you want like i said if this is temporary if you want to hold a, a fiber cable together you use a coupler but if you want it to be a permanent fix we new, use something called as a splicer right you splice those two cables so what you do is if you can see the this is a finger now for for scale you can see how a fiber strand is so once you strip all those um uh, uh claddings once you strip those protective covers and the cladding, this is how thin a fiber cable is, right? So you take two fiber cables, you put one here, put another strand here, and you close this lid. Once you do the lid and you have whatever you have to do here, you say splice, it splices together, and those two uh, uh, fiber, uh, I mean, when you say fiber, it's nothing but glass, because of the uh, splice, splicing mechanism, it fuses those two glasses together to form a permanent bond. Now, this is a point you should be asking Imran. Um, we saw in most of the devices that we only had this port, right? This port is for RJ45. Now, where are we going to insert our fiber optic connectors, right? Of course, you could use media converter like I discussed in the last slide. But if you want to directly connect them to your switches, how would you do? First thing, we have a lot of switches that has fiber ports. Now, if you don't have switches with fiber port, you would at least have switches with SFP ports. SFP is nothing but small uh, form factor pluggables. So what you, you get is you get these transceivers so you see these transceivers so this is a transceiver for an rj45 uh, connector this is for an lc duplex right so you see lc duplex so once it goes here so this is exactly uh, an sfp uh, uh, transceiver that is plugged in so once you plug in you have these ports and you can now this is also an sfp so an sfp uh, port looks something like this and these transceivers go inside here and you have access to so once you have these sfp uh, transceivers connected in you could directly plug your fiber right fiber can directly go in there and it could be just like another connection next we need to discuss is about um, sham medium and p2p right so all all the uh, discussions that we had throughout this um, uh, series was about um, connecting your devices to a central switch. Now, when you have a central switch, it is a shared medium because it's a one, it's a large broadcast domain, right? The difference between hub and switch is uh, in hub, there's only one broadcast domain and one collision domain. But in a switch, each of those ports in a switch have their own collision domain. That means to say multiple devices can talk to each other, right? That is what uh, even though it's a share medium switches break those collision domains still making um, uh, allowing different devices to communicate 
with each other right but still it is a shared medium but if you're talking about uh, peer to peer or point to point it's if you were to connect a computer directly to another computer that is a peer to peer connection a point to point connection because now you're not sharing that medium with anybody else you have a dedicated connection between the two devices Another concept we need to talk about in this video is called PoE, that is nothing but power over Ethernet. Now consider you are the IT um, executive or engineer or technician, whatever, uh, in a hotel, right? You have a hotel like this with um, 20 floors, right? And after your design, uh, you realized each floor requires, I mean, this is just one corridor, so you have like four corridor, it's like a square, let's assume. Right, this hotel uh, has a um, corridor on four sides. So they have decided that each floor will have eight uh, access points. So you'll have one access point here, one 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 here, because that allows you to create uh, a place where you get wireless access point to um, everybody. So let's say rooms are uh, like that and you have rooms inside here as well right and because of this design you can let's say um, give wireless access point like that right you can give eight wireless zones such that you cover the full hotel right typically if you were to connect a wireless access point you need two things you need if this is a wireless access point of course you can't see there so if this is a wireless access point you need power right you have electricity electrical power point and of course you need your data point right it needs to go to the internet somewhere right if this is the access point you need power and data typically um, all these um, hotels when they design they would have given you a data uh, connection a cat5 cable connection in multiple points where the architect would have said okay we'll have an uh, uh, depending on a lot of factors before designing they would have consulted uh, your IT and then they would have designed and they would have given uh, cables but running power is not as easy as running uh, your data cables so there is a concept of PoE what happens is from your switch you would run a cable to a device called a PoE driver right it's called a PoE driver and most of the uh, wireless access points come up come with uh, uh, PoE drivers uh, if you were to buy uh, individually but Cisco's access points of course you know Cisco has switches that can support PoE so let's let's first understand what PoE is so PoE is this device would connect to power right so you connect this device to power and you connect from your switch you connect to the LAN port from the other port the other port is called the PoE port from the PoE port you connect to your access point now what's happening is this access point now does not need a separate connection to power right it doesn't need that connection to power because this wire would be giving both it would be giving the data or the internet connection right let's assume this is connected to the internet so this single wire going to that device poe device will give power and data right so this poe driver actually takes that takes the uh, data connection so this cable is a regular data only comes here this device combines power and uh, data and sends that to your PoE enabled device and that device is powered on just by one cable right so that in in a lot of hotels and a lot of things it looks beautiful because you could just drop one Ethernet cable and then that wireless access point stays there without any other supporting cables but if you were to run a power connection you'll have to give one socket there you plug your your uh, the charger block right um, the charger block of um, uh, your device that black wire is dangling and it's plugged in there it looks really ugly right that's the aesthetic part of it but this is how wireless access point 
security cameras and a lot of PoE enabled devices. This is the basic principle, right? You have a PoE driver that works. Today, you don't even need this, right? A lot of Cisco switches are something called the PoE enabled switches, right? So you have either some of the ports that's PoE enabled or you have all of the ports that's PoE enabled, right? So even Cisco phones, right? If you're doing Cisco IP phones, everything is PoE enabled, right? So you need to drive those. So Cisco has a PoE enabled switches. So you could directly connect those to your device, whether it's a phone, your security cameras, or if um, these uh, uh, wireless access points, and that will power, right? So this is connected to power. Your, of course, the switch has power connection. That power connection will start sending power out on each of those switch ports, right? This is the uh, idea of a POE. And that's all we have for today. I hope you liked the video. Hit on the like button and subscribe to our channel. We'll be back with a new video very soon. Bye-bye.